Welcome to Cravings Control for Fat Loss. I'm your host, Laura Cavallo, former sugar binger, overeater, and yo-yo dieter turned fat loss and cravings coach for hundreds of busy women. Here at Cravings Control for Fat Loss, I'll be sharing mindset, movement, and metabolism strategies for those who are ready to ditch the fat diet cycle and slim down without counting calories, tracking points, or giving up any of the foods they love. Get ready to embrace progress over perfection, grace over guilt, and bring curiosity and learning to the inevitable ups and downs of your life. Expect a decrease in your cravings while seeing and feeling an improvement in how you look, how you feel, and your overall quality of life. I am so excited you're here, boo. Let's get started. Hello and welcome to another episode of Cravings Control for Fat Loss. My name is Laura Cavallo, your cravings coach, and today I'm doing a deep dive into our second cravings archetype, Hormonal Henrietta. I'm going to be sharing some characteristics as well as solutions to help you get cravings under control, feel more confident around food, and just make sense of why you're craving and what exactly to do about it. If you don't know your cravings archetype yet, hit pause and click the link below to take you to the free quiz. It's going to take you less than two minutes, and once you get your results, they'll be emailed to you. You can also come back to these recordings for a bit more of a deep dive into characteristics and solutions. These solutions that I'm sharing with you for each archetype are the same strategies that you're going to find in my six-week one-on-one coaching pod program, The Cravings Code, okay? And the Cravings Code delivers up to 70% less cravings, hunger, and overeating, and will help you develop a better relationship with food, more control, and more confidence, okay? And in September, I'm going to launch the third cohort of it. The strategies in the Cravings Code are the same ones that have helped my one-on-one clients reduce cravings, reduce overeating, reduce occasional binges, and prime them to lose up to 10 pounds and 10 inches in three months' time. So the next round is going to be in September. If anything that I share today or in the next coming episodes, or you just want to learn more about cravings control and you're sick of feeling like you're on a hamster wheel one day or one week, you're good. And then by the weekend, you're overeating and binging. You just can't get a handle on it. And it's been like this for years. The cravings code is for you. Go ahead and add your name to the no commitment wait list below. When you add your name to the waitlist, you're just getting early access with included bonuses and discounts. There's no commitment to join whatsoever, but you do get on the interest list ahead of everyone else. Now, before I dive into strategies and solutions, I want to share more about why I created the Cravings Quiz and how you can use it. So over the last three years, I've dedicated my education my coaching practices, and all of my tools and strategies towards helping women with insatiable cravings, constant hunger, and overeating. As a result of my own struggles that I've been through and the women that I've worked with and the women that I speak to every single day, I've noticed patterns and I've noticed commonalities as to why women crave right? What their actual triggers are. Now, because as humans, we like to make sense of things in categories and organize things mentally. I knew that something like creating archetypes was going to help women understand their cravings better, get really specific with the solutions that they need. I knew that I could do that in a super easy and accessible way. And in under two minutes with just 10 questions by taking the free cravings quiz, you will have your cravings archetype, okay? And then you can really double down on super simple, actionable steps that you can start taking today. But beyond knowing what your actual archetype is, right? Like what your triggers are, Because like, sure, that's great to know, but like, what are you going to do with it, right? We need solutions to help you reduce the cravings on overeating, right? So that you can feel more in control making food choices, more confident around food in different situations. And if you have a fat loss or weight loss goal, you can attain it more easily, right? Because you are not going to be able to have an easy time with weight loss and fat loss if you find yourself constantly overeating, constantly having cravings, nighttime, afternoon cravings, finding yourself binging occasionally. So the strategies and solutions I provide are actionable, they're simple, they're straightforward, and they span exercise, 
They span nutrition and they span lifestyle. And all of this with the backdrop of mindset, right? Meaning as you take action on these strategies, we're going to shift your mindset around food. We're going to improve your relationship with food. We're going to move you more out of that all or nothing thinking, that black or white thinking, that good and bad food thinking. Now, while knowing your cravings archetype is not intended to treat or diagnose any illness or disease, and this should not replace the advice of a doctor or a medical professional, knowing your cravings archetype can help you feel more empowered. Okay, because you know you're not alone. You start to understand that cravings are common and normal. And most importantly, that there's fucking solutions, right? That there are actual solutions to what you're going through. Whew. I just think back to, to, you know, my years of dealing with this and like it was so long, so arduous and so it just like broke me down, you know, and I just really didn't think there was any solutions. I honestly thought I was a freak and I was so embarrassed and I was so ashamed and I didn't tell anyone. And then I heard other women talking about it on Instagram and sharing their stories. And I was like, oh shit, this is a problem that a lot of women face. So I hope that you can stick with this long enough to see some results and to start to see that cravings don't have to control your life, that food doesn't have to control your life, that you can live a life where you can enjoy social events and travel and nights alone without fear of overeating and, you know, letting food take over. So two things to keep in mind before we dive in. While most of us have one dominant cravings archetype, you might find characteristics from others as well. So while you might be a dominant routine Roberta, you might have characteristics from disconnected Donna. Okay, so these do ebb and flow together, right? But you are going to have one more dominant archetype. Okay, the second thing to keep in mind is that your archetype is going to evolve and change over time. So you might be a routine Roberta right now, right? But then in a year or two, you turn into a disconnected Donna. So just keep that in mind. Just know that this is flowing. We don't work in absolutes and black and white because you're an individual and things change. Hey there, boo. I'm giving away a $50 gift card to one lucky winner. To enter the drawing, all you have to do is submit a review of this podcast. Your honest review will help me get in front of other women who may be struggling and need a realistic and sustainable approach to their cravings and fat loss goals. Here's what you have to do. If you're a Spotify listener, click the three dots next to the follow button and under the cover photo and click rate the show. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, go to the homepage of the podcast and scroll down past the episodes and past ratings and reviews, and you'll find a purple text saying write a review. After you write your review, take a screenshot of it and send it over to me so that I know it's you and I can put you into the drawing for the $50 gift card. I will be taking submissions all the way through end of July and then I will be drawing that winner and announcing it on the August 3rd podcast. Your review truly means the world to me. Thank you so much for taking two minutes of your time. It really means so, so much. So let's dive into Hormonal Henrietta. This archetype is all about hormonal imbalance and getting it back to balance and also your metabolism, right? And why your metabolism may not be functioning as flexibly as we'd like. So if you're a hormonal henrietta, some characteristics that you might experience, you might be someone that skips meals, okay, and lacks satisfying ingredients when you eat. You may also experience midday and nighttime cravings, okay? You might often feel ravenous when these cravings hit. Like you cannot control yourself. You feel like a Dr. Jekyll and Mrs. Hyde. You may also experience poor quality sleep and high stress, okay? These are two huge cravings, triggers, and hormone disruptors, stress and sleep. You might rely on caffeine to get through the day because you feel low energy, you feel fatigued, and you might also need wine to unwind because you feel so high stressed. You might be either on or off birth control and experience intense PMS symptoms and find that your hunger is unmanageable around your time of the month, around your period. You might also be overtraining, right? Five, six, seven days a week, not a lot of rest. 
this might be in combination with some sort of intense exercise or exercise that's really impacting your metabolism and your thyroid. In addition, you this could be coupled with under eating, okay, so not fueling properly enough, and now your metabolism is feeling strained, or you might be doing one of these things on their own, which is also going to impact hunger and cravings, meaning either overtraining and or under eating. Now, these are just some characteristics of hormonal henrietta. I see this a lot. I see hormonal henrietta come through a lot. A lot of the strategies that we share with our clients, both on this podcast, on my Instagram, and in the cravings code are going to help you feel like a human again, right? Because if you're a hormonal henrietta, I know how damaging it can feel and be to just feel out of control around food, feel like nothing satiates you, feel like you could eat your left arm plus everything in the cabinet and still not be full. And just like you feel just like a, a prisoner, like so powerless against your cravings and your hormones and your metabolism could be the factor. So your first strategy is to focus on strength training. Okay. Strength training is going to help build metabolically demanding muscle tissue. It's going to help keep your metabolism more flexible, stronger. It's going to help it operate more efficiently. When you have muscle on your body, your hormones uh, are working a bit better. Things are flushing out better. Your body's more resilient. Okay. And so I want you to really focus on building up your strength, building up your resistance and your endurance with weight training. Meaning if one week you're using 10 pound weights, then in two or three weeks, I want you to try and go up to 12 and a half or 15. And then in two or three weeks, going up to 17 and a half or 20 pounds. Okay, so we want that progressive overload with all of your weights, with your strength training, so that we are creating more demand on the muscle and you're helping to build that lean muscle tissue that we want. If you have been doing satisfied plates for any time, you know that part one of creating a satisfied plate is to include lean, right? And lean, the word lean, part one stands for feed the lean, feed the lean muscle tissue in your body, right? That's why it's so important to include protein in our satisfied plates. And that will be strategy number three, but feed the lean, okay? Strength train. I recommend minimum of two days a week, 30 to 45 minutes. You can go up to four or five times a week, 30 to 45 minutes. Do exercises that you enjoy. Use modalities that you enjoy. If you don't like barbells, if you don't like dumbbells, try the TRX, right? Try the BOSU ball to start. Try um, sandbags. Try sand balls, okay? Try, you know, the cable machines. There are a ton of different ways to create resistance on the body to help you build that strength, to help you build some muscle mass. So I know that it can be a little intimidating to get started in the gym, but the more comfortable you can get with weights, even if it's just at home, following like a YouTube video or some workout program on Netflix or something, just start to lift, just start to get comfortable. You're going to see cravings are going to improve the more muscle that you have. The second strategy is to rethink your sleep routine. Okay, this is so, so important. Your sleep, getting quality and quantity sleep, seven to nine hours of a, a night where you feel rested in the morning is so vitally crucial to cravings and hunger and to your fat loss goals. And besides all of that shit, if you're not sleeping, your health is likely not in good standing, okay? We need to rest and regenerate. Our bodies need that downtime to just heal and take care of all of our organ functions and get rid of toxins and just do its regeneration thing. We're literally the only mammals on earth that like deprive ourselves of sleep and try and stay up and don't get enough sleep. So rest, okay? I have a lot of different podcast episodes on sleep and we go into a full deep dive in the cravings code about different strategies that you can do to start to improve your sleep. This is multi-layered, okay? Because there's things you can do before bedtime. There's things you can do to prep yourself during the day for better sleep. There's things you can do during the night. Even your bedroom setup is so important. And then things you can do like the moment you wake up to help you have better quality sleep that night. So 
sleep is there's layers to it, but you can literally just start with one thing. So I'm going to give you two two tips to start with. So the first is to avoid caffeine within 10 hours of bedtime, even if you find that you can have like an espresso before bed and go to sleep, you might still also experience you might still experience some disruption. So try and limit your caffeine eight to 10 hours before bedtime. The second thing that you can do is start to create a sleep routine. So instead of just like clicking the TV off from the couch and hopping into bed, see if you can create some sort of down routine that's going to help you relax, help you de-stress. That could be washing your face, brushing your teeth, taking a bath, putting on some calming music, putting on some comfortable pajamas, crawling into bed with a book, listening to yoga nidra, which is like a relaxing meditation that you can listen to going to bed. Create some sort of sleep routine ahead of when you want to be asleep. So if you want to be in bed by 10, start your sleep routine by 9, 9 9.15. Even if that includes like packing lunch for the next day and getting things ready for the next day, include that in your nighttime routine so you're starting to decompress a bit. And then I'm going to give you a bonus one. Try to avoid overhead lighting, okay, within two hours of bedtime. So if you can start to dim the lights, put on some lamps, avoid overhead lighting, um, it's going to help your body be more efficient at producing melatonin, which is a natural mineral that our body produces. And it's been so dumbed down because we are flooded with artificial lights from our phones to our computers. And so we need to really help our body be more efficient at producing melatonin. So try and avoid overhead lighting. And if you can avoid watching TV or your phone within an hour of bedtime, I know it's really hard. Maybe just try with one, right? No cell phone within an hour of bedtime. So that's strategy number two. So the idea with that is as we improve your sleep routine, you're going to be more well rested. You're going to have less cravings, less desire to overeat because, and I should have said this when we started, but sleep deprivation will actually trigger your hunger hormone called ghrelin, right? And ghrelin is that hormone that growls in your stomach. And when you have not slept enough, ghrelin increases. You feel more hungry as a physiological response. Also, as a result, leptin, okay, which is another hormone that's responsible for many things in your body, but one of them is to signal fullness, okay? Leptin decreases, so your ability to feel fullness signals decreases. So you feel like a bottomless pit and you're eating all day when you're sleep deprived, right? So that's why it's so important to focus on sleep. And the third strategy is to include more protein and vegetables into your three main meals, okay? And this is something I talk about over and over and over, like a broken record, satisfied plates is your best friend, okay? Protein and veggies provide fullness, they provide fiber, they provide satiation, They take up a lot of room in your stomach. They're voluminous foods for the least amount of calories. They help soften if you're eating more sugary crave foods that might spike your blood glucose. Protein and vegetables, meaning protein and fiber, help soften that sugar spike. And so they can help keep some cravings at bay. It's not, you know, a foolproof solution. It's not going to be the only strategy you need. But we do go through in the Cravings Code how to consistently create satisfied plates anywhere, anytime. And the cool thing about satisfied plates is that you can take this guide and put it together at a restaurant. You can do it while you're on vacation. You can do it while you're at a beer garden having an afternoon with friends. You can do it when you're at happy hour. You can do it when you walk into a 7-Eleven and you're on a road trip. You can put together satisfied ingredients so that you're eating more of these volume fiber, protein-rich foods that help you feel more full. So eating consistently satisfied is one of the best things that you can do, not just for cravings control, but for fat loss and for overall health. So if you are not familiar with satisfied plates, go back. I think it's episode four and learn how to create a satisfied plate. Um, And it's something that we do deep dive in on the cravings code. So again, something that you'll learn if you do join us in September. Okay, that is all I have on hormonal Henrietta. I hope that this episode was helpful. And if you have not taken the quiz yet, pause, go down below, take the quiz, hit me up on Instagram. Let me know where your cravings archetype is. Let me know what your biggest struggle is with nutrition and diet right now. I want to be able to support you. I want to be able to help you. And I cannot wait to hear from you. 